Welcome back to my channel. Let's look at the ectomoid bone. In this lecture, I'll be unfolding the basic morphology of the ectomoid bone. The ectomoid bone is located at the base of the neurocranial, and that is why it is taken as part of the structural component of the neurocranial bones. If you try to divide the entire skull or the cranium into the two subdivisions that it is made up of, at this point that is demarcated here in red, the upper part is the neurocranium, while the lower part is the visceral cranium. The upper part encloses the brain, and that is where the name is being drafted from, neuro neurocranium. That's the cranium of the neural tissue. Now, inferiorly, we have the visceral cranium, which is where we have the other organs that are located around the face region. So this is the visceral cranium at the inferior part. However, at the upper part, we have the neurocranium. And because of the entire configuration or the circumference of the neurocranium, you have the ectomoid bone located at the inferior part of the neurocranium. So it is seen to be located at the base of the neurocranium. And because it forms part of the structural alignment of the entire circumference of the neurocranium, it is taken as part of the neurocranial bones. So you see it located around here. And at this region, you see it separating the anterior cranial fossa from the nasal cavity. So you have the anterior cranial fossa at the front here because it is located at the anterior part of the brace of the neurocranial. So it is located at the anterior region. So it will definitely be separating the anterior cranial fossa, which is the fossa that is located in the anterior part from the nasal cavity in the inferior part. So it is taken as part of the structural component of the neurocranial because it forms part of the alignment of the neurocranial, even though it is located at the base of the neurocranial. Let's go further by looking at the structural component of the ectomoid bone. So the ectomoid bone is seen with a number of sub-regions, and the first one is the cribriform plate of ectomoid. The cribriform plate of ectomoid is seen as a plate that is located transversely in the ectomoid bone. The entire configuration of the ectomoid, and this is where we have the location of the cribriform plate of ectomoid. You see it located transversely or horizontally. So it runs like that. And at this point where it is positioned here, you see it forming the roof of the nasal cavity. This is where you have the nasal cavity at the inferior part. So above it, you have this horizontal plate, you know, running above it. And at this position, it is seen to form the roof of the nasal cavity. In this image here, this is where you have the cribriform plate of ectomoid. If you look at the entire configuration of this image up here, you see that above here is where you have the anterior cranial fossa. This is the cranial cavity up here, and in the anterior part is where you have the anterior cranial fossa. And inferiorly, you have the nasal cavity. On both sides, you have the orbit. You see the ethmoid bone here highlighted in purple. So specifically, this region where this arrow is pointing is transverse plate that is referred to as the cribriform plate of ectomoid. So you see it lining here. So at this point, it's forming the roof of the nasal cavity, whereby the entire configuration of the ectomoid bone is seen to separate the anterior cranial fossa from the nasal cavity. Of course, you have the two orbits on both sides. So this is how the ectomoid bone is placed. So if you drive specifically onto the cribriform plate, you see that it falls onto the roof of the nasal cavity. So if you try to drive in more on the cribriform plate of ectomoid, you see that it is not a blocked bone. It is seen with foramina or holes created on it. If you look at this image here that is highlighted in yellow, you see that this cribriform plate here has holes created on it. And these holes are so created so as to allow the passage of the axons of the olfactory nerve. Remember a lecture on the nasal cavity where we try to dis dis subdivide the nasal cavity into the respiratory segment and the olfactory segment. The olfactory segment is located at the apex or the roof of the nasal cavity. This segment you have olfactory nerve. So this olfactory nerve is responsible for carrying sensory information, which are specifically for the sense of smell. So as this information part through this cribriform plate because this is what borders the roof of the nasal cavity. And if it needs to pass through it, definitely O's or foramina will need to be created. So as for it to have the allowance to pass through and enter into the cranial cavity. Because above here is where you have the cranial cavity. And we know that in the cranial cavity is where we have the olfactory cortex. And it is in the olfactory cortex that this interpretation will be done. So it needs to pass through the O's that are created on the cribriform plate. And that is why we have those holes created so as to allow for the passage of the hard zone of the olfactory nerve so that they can pass through it and assess the cranial cavity where it will finally be relayed onto the olfactory cortex where the final interpretation 
will be done. So this is how the configuration of the cribriform plate is. They are saying to have a sieve-like appearance. And this sieve-like appearance is as a result of the holes that are created on it. Also, we have an extension above the cribriform plate. And this extension is referred to as the crystal galley. If you look at this transversely placed cribriform plate, you see an extension up here that is also arrayed in blue. This is called the crystal galley. This crystal galley is so formed so as to create attachment site for the fat cerebri. The fat cerebri is a fold of dura matter that divides the two cerebral hemisphere. So you see it dividing the two cerebral hemisphere and finally forming an attachment with the crystal galley because above this cribriform plate, the next region that will be seen is the cranial cavity. If you look at this image up here, you see that this is where you have the ethmoid bone. So superiorly, you have the anterior cranial fossa. We already said that the ethmoid bone separates the anterior cranial fossa from the nasal cavity. So within this upper region, definitely you'll be having the cranial cavity. So within this cranial cavity, you can see that this extension, the crystal galley, this is where you have the crystal galley, you're extending into the cranial cavity. So it is within the cranial cavity that you have this extension so as to be creating attachment site for the fast cerebri. And the fast cerebri is helping to divide the two cerebral hemisphere. So in this way, the crystal gall is helping to create a structural support for the structures that are located within the cranial cavity. And another structure is the perpendicular plate of ethmoid. Perpendicular plate of ethmoid, just from the name, that means it has a perpendicular part from the cribriform plate of ethmoid. This is the cribriform plate of ethmoid. So you see the perpendicular plate of ethmoid here, harrowed in red, you see it descending down from the cribriform plate of ethmoid. Remember, we already have an extension hole going into the cranial cavity. So you also have an extension down entering into the nasal cavity because the ethmoid bone separates the cranial cavity, specifically the anterior cranial fossa, from the nasal cavity. So you see the perpendicular plate being directed towards the nasal cavity. And as it moves down, it is helping to divide the nasal cavity. You go and check out my lecture on the nasal cavity. You see that we have the nasal septum, which helps to divide the nasal cavity into the right side and the left side. It has a bony part at the posterior part, and it has a cartilaginous part in the anterior part. For the bony part at the posterior part, the superior to third is formed by the perpendicular plate of ethmoid. So this is where this perpendicular plate of ethmoid emerge from the cribriform plate and it descends down, thereby dividing the nasal cavity into the two subregions that it is made up of. So you see the perpendicular plate of ethmoid forming the superior to third of the nasal septum, where you have the vomer extending down to meet with the perpendicular plate of ethmoid. And that is what forms this inferior one third of the nasal septum. So the two structures will form the bony part of the nasal septum. Look at this image up here. This is where we have the perpendicular plate of ethmoid also extending from the cribriform plate, but coming down to divide the nasal cavity into the right side and the left side. So this is where we say we have the nasal cavity here. We say it is located at the central part. So as the perpendicular plate of ethmoid emerges from the cribriform plate, driving down along the nasal cavity, you see it at the end, then dividing the nasal cavity into the right side and the left side. So the other subregion is the ethmoidal labyrinth. The ethmoidal labyrinth is like a thick mass of bone that is located on the lateral side of the ethmoid. We've described the cribriform plate as this horizontal plate, we describe the crystal galley as a superior extension. Then we also describe perpendicular plate of ethmoid as an inferior extension from the cribriform plate of ethmoid. Then we have this lateral mass here that's called the ethmoidal labyrinth. So this is where you have the ethmoidal labyrinth in this image on the lateral side. So you see it as a thick mass on the lateral side of the ethmoid bone. In this image, this is where you have the ethmoidal labyrinth on the lateral side. So let's drive in to see the sub-regions of the ethmoidal labyrinth. The ethmoidal labyrinth will have the ethmoidal sinuses. So the ethmoidal sinuses are actually located within the ethmoidal labyrinth. So this is where we have the ethmoidal sinuses. Then we also have the superior concha. This is the superior concha. Then we have the middle concha. This is the middle concha. 
So you see that within the ethmoidal labyrinth, we have a number of sub-regions. We have the ethmoidal sinuses that are created as perfect spaces that are located within the ethmoidal labyrinth. Then we have projections also that are referred to as concha. So let's drive more in to see the structural configuration of the ethmoidal labyrinth. For the ethmoidal labyrinth, they are seen to be made up of two plates. This is where the ethmoidal labyrinth is located, as we've stated in our previous slide. It's a mass of bone that is seen around the lateral part of the ethmoid bone. So if you look at this image, this is also where we have the ethmoidal labyrinth. So if you try to drive in into this structure, you see that it is made up of a medial plate. This is where we have the medial plate. So you see a plate of bone on the medial side. Then we have the lateral plate, and this is the lateral plate. So the medial plate that is located around this place, if you look at this configuration, you see that we already stated in our previous slide that we have the nasal cavity around the central region. So it means the medial plate of the ethmoidal labyrinth will be forming the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. So you see it forming the lateral wall of the nasal cavity because we have the nasal cavity at this part. And if you see the medial plate, which is the plate that is located close to the median plane, this is like the median plane. So this is the plate here. You see it forming the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. And this is the nasal cavity here that is arrowed in black. So if you look at the lateral wall, of the nasal cavity, you see that it is formed by the medial plate of the ethmoidal labyrinth. And the orbit is seen somewhere around this region. You see one on this side and you see one on the other side. If you look at the configuration of the orbit, it has a medial side and it has a lateral side. So you have the medial side there, you have the lateral side there, you also have the medial side there, you have the lateral side there. So if you look at the orbit, the medial side of the orbit is formed by the lateral plate of the ethmoidal labyrinth. We already said that this is the lateral plate of the ethmoidal labyrinth, which is the plate that is located lateral from the medial plate. So this is the medial plate, this is the lateral plate. So this lateral plate will be seen to form the medial wall of the orbit because we actually have the orbit on this side. So the lateral plate will be forming the medial wall of the orbit. This, of course, is easy to understand. If you look at this image up here, this is where we have the orbit. This is where we have the ethmoidal labyrinth. And if you have the ethmoidal labyrinth in this region, we have the medial plate here, you have the lateral plate here. The medial plate, you can see it forming the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. Why the lateral plate will be forming the medial wall of the orbit. So that is how that is established. So if you look deeply, you see that ethmoidal sinuses are sandwiched between the medial and the lateral plate. So this is where you have the ethmoidal sinuses here, harrowed in yellow. They are airfit spaces. It's one of the paranasal sinuses. I've also done a lecture on the paranasal sinuses. Please kindly go and check the lecture up to keep yourself updated. So we have ethmoidal air sinuses, which are airfit spaces, and these are sandwiched between the medial and the lateral plate of ethmoidal labyrinth. Because we say the ethmoidal sinuses are located within the ethmoidal labyrinth. So you see it positioned between where we have the medial plate and the lateral plate of ethmoidal labyrinth. Then going further, let's look at the medial plate. We already said the medial plate of the ethmoidal labyrinth is seen to form the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. So this is the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. This is the kind of projections that are seen within the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. We already described this in our previous slide that the medial plate of the ethmoidal labyrinth will border the nasal cavity at the lateral part. So this is the configuration that is seen. So if you look at it, we have the superior conchite. This is the superior Conchai that we described in our previous slide as part of the extension from the ethmoidal labyrinth. But this region here is the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. And this is what the medial plate of the ethmoidal labyrinth forms. So if you look at it, the nasal septum is chopped off here, which means the perpendicular plate of ethmoid is not seen in this image. So if you remove that, what you see is the lateral wall. So this is one lateral wall. You'll be having another lateral wall on the other side. So this is where you have the superior conchi, then you have the middle conchi. These two conchi are part of the projections of the ethmoidal labyrinth. We described this in our previous slide, but we also have an inferior conchi. This inferior conchi is not part of the structural component of the ethmoid bone. It is a separate bone on its own. It is just seen to form an alignment with the configuration of the lateral wall of the nasal cavity. And because of this projection is seen at the inferior part, it is taken as the inferior conchi. But just for us to know that the superior and the middle conchi are the only conchi 
that forms the structural component of the ethmoidal bone. So in between the conchi, you have meatosis, which are depression. When you have elevations, in between the elevations, you have depressions. And these depressions are called meatosis. So you have the superior meatus. The superior meatus is the pressure that is created between the superior and the middle conchi. Then you have the middle meatus here, which is the depression that is created between the middle and the inferior conchi. Then inferior to the inferior conchi, you now have the inferior meatus. So you see these meatuses are like depressions that are created between the conchi, which are the elevations. So if you try to drive in more on the middle meatus, this is where you have the middle meatus. The middle meatus has distinct configuration. It is not seen as the other meatuses, like the superior and the inferior meatus. You see that they are just plain. But for the middle meatus, it has a number of configuration or transformation. So you have another elevation within the middle meatus, and this is called the ethmoid bulla. So this is where you have the ethmoid bulla or bulla ethmoidalis. So this elevation is created, and we say when we have elevation, the next is to have a depression. So we have a depression after this elevation, or like a gutter or canal. And this is referred to as the hiatus semilunaris. So you have the hiatus semilunaris here, arrowed in white, which is a depression that is created after the ethmoid bulla. So this is another depression that is created within the middle meatus. The inferior to the hiatus semilunaris, you have the unstinate process. So this is the unstinate process. This process is seen to be connecting with the inferior conchai. So you see it's making a connection with the inferior conchai. So these are the transformations that are seen within the lateral wall, which is formed by the medial plate. So going to the lateral plate, we already described the medial plate. So the lateral plate is seen to form the medial wall of the orbit. So this is the lateral plate here. This is the lateral plate, this is the medial plate. So this lateral plate, we already said we have the orbit around this region. This is the orbit also around the other region. And of course the orbit has a medial wall and also a lateral wall. So the medial wall of the orbit will be seen to form alignment with the lateral plate of the ethmoidal labyrinth. So thanks for watching this video. Let's meet again.